Two more investors have now stepped forward in a last-ditch effort to prevent hedge fund Alden Global Capital from taking control of Tribune Publishing. That's a company that owns the Chicago Tribune and eight other papers. That is welcome news to journalists and readers that are worried about Alden's reputation for cutting newsroom staffs to the bone. Alden currently owns about a third of Tribune Publishing. It's offered $17.25 a share, valuing the company at $630 million. And the counteroffer, led by hotel magnate Stuart Bainham, is for $18.50 a share, a $650 million value. And joining us to talk about the fast-moving developments here are Charles Whitaker, Dean of Northwestern's Medill School of Journalism, David Jackson of the Better Government Association and former Tribune investigative reporter. He was part of an effort to find a buyer for the paper. And Gregory Pratt, president of the Chicago Tribune Guild, a spokesperson for the special committee of the Tribune Publishing Board evaluating the sale, declined to comment. Alden Global Capital did not respond to our request for a comment. We are grateful to have the three of you here. So where it stands now, Alden has a deal on the table to buy out the remaining shares of the company. Greg Pratt, remind us why journalists and other staffers at the Tribune are so worried about that. Well, Alden Global Capital is just about the worst company in the news business. They're a hedge fund that wrings profit out of its newspapers without any real regard to investing in staff and coverage and making sure that things run well. The only thing they care about is wringing profits out of it and wringing um, more than is reasonable out of it. You know, I'm not speaking uh, from a perspective of capitalism is bad. I'm speaking from a perspective of uh, they're not uh, they're not really practicing uh, capitalism. They're trying to uh, at least not in any strict way because they don't care about um, the long term or the midterm, they only care about the short term and they will cut the paper as as they see fit. To and make certainly they have money. done that to other publications they've owned around the country. David Jackson, you and your former colleague at the Trib, Gary Marks, you went on a crusade to try and find investors. You left the Tribune, but apparently an editorial you co-wrote in the New York Times caught the attention of billionaire Hans Jorg Wies, or Hans Jorg Wies. Uh, so you've got Bainham now, you've got Wies, and potentially a third investor. How promising is this? Well, it's a very big step, but even with all this uh, promising news for those investors and for Tribune Publishing and certainly the Chicago Tribune, there still could be a long, rocky road ahead, Paris. And in a New York Times interview, billionaire Hans Jorg Wies, who is one of the two investors, step up, said, quote, I don't want to see another newspaper that has a chance to increase the amount of truth being told to the American people going down the drain. Maybe I'm naive, but the combination of giving enough money to a professional staff to do the right things and putting quite a bit of money into digital will eventually make it a very profitable paper. Charles Whitaker, you heard David Jackson there say it could still be a long, bumpy path. What would have to happen for such a deal to go through? Well, I don't know what will happen to make the deal go through. The long, bumpy path is the fact that this doesn't address the fundamental issue with local news right now, and that is that there is no business model. Um, the question is, will angel investors have the stomach and the, the will to endure a long time of, of increasing uh, losses in local news? That business model is irreparably broken. Um, Display advertising, classified advertising is not going to come back. So the question is, are we going to support local news as a public good and not as a for-profit entity? And you've studied this a lot, and you're saying that the business model really needs to be rethought. There's a lot of nonprofit models that are working out there. Greg Pratt, uh, could Alden just decide to block this deal, even though the proposal now is richer than what Alden itself is intending to do? Well, that's where it gets really interesting because Alden can cause uh, Alden can cause problems for a sale, and uh, uh, Patrick Soonshang, the owner of the LA Times, owns a significant amount of stock, and he can cause problems for Alden. And these guys can uh, uh, so they can bid against each other, they can block each other, they can cause uh, difficulties closing a deal for each other. And the question, though, for Alden is, do they really want to, you know? Um, do they want to deal with that and do they want to deal with a situation where they're blocked on a full purchase because what we're talking about is they they they're attempting to buy out the whole company and make it private and these guys are trying to buy it out from under them or buy out certain papers and uh to what extent 
they think it's worth keeping and only having, uh, you know, the the amount of control that they currently have, which is significant, uh, versus owning it outright or selling it outright. It's a very um, complicated situation where they're they're you know I, I would imagine everybody in this uh, dynamic has headaches often. So it's not very clear what would be in Alden's best interest here to still buy the Tribune outright, to sell it outright. We'll have to see how that shakes out. To David Jackson, I want to get back to what Charles Whitaker said about models for profitability. Is there a path to profitability, sustained profitability for the Chicago Tribune, especially if you look at papers like the Washington Post, which Jeff Bezos bought, invested a lot in it, it is profitable. Is that a model that the Tribune could go for? Well, I think Charles was trying to make the point about local and regional newspapers. Um, and I think it's a point that's well made. I, I respectfully um, reserve judgment about his point. I'm not in the, the um, business side of the of, of newspapering. I'm a, I'm a longtime investigative reporter who's, who's done the journalism from the trenches. I, I think that there may be um, new models emerging both in the for-profit and the nonprofit world. Uh, clearly, um, newspapers have to find a way to gather uh, a new and robust digital audience, whether they're national like the Washington Post and, and the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal, or whether they're regional like the uh, many sister papers of Tribune Publishing. And again, I really want to um, I want to stress to your to your audience, I'm not a business person, but I do think I would reserve judgment as to whether the model is broken or crippled or about to be reinvented. I, I, I think we're in a state of real flux where um, the future is, is I, I would say, to be determined in a way by the next generation. Of, of journalists. And there's certainly lots of different organizations, especially including the one you're working for, and uh, organizations like Block Club that are doing different models. Charles Whitaker, what about that Washington Post comparison? Is it just because that is a national paper? The Chicago Tribune has been a regional paper. I mean, important not just to Chicago, but to the Midwest. Yeah, I don't think you can compare the national papers, the Washington Post, the New York Times, and the Wall Street Journal to the regional papers. Um, you, you do have a national audience that has been willing to pony up and pay um, to receive that news. We haven't seen that model work as well on a local level. But one of the things that we haven't done is we haven't made the case to the general public that they should pay for news, that news is, some, is important and should be supported the same way that uh, a WTPW or a, 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 P, a WBEZ sort of makes the case to the general public that this is worthwhile and that you should pay for it. We have conditioned the public to believe that news, local news is like air and that it should be free. Um, and we've got to change that mindset if we're going to create a sustainable. And, and a lot of that is because in the past, the uh, news organizations did rely on classified and advertising revenue, which has dried up. Greg Pratt, there have been so many defections of journalists at the Tribune, including your former colleague, David Jackson. Just give us a sense of how cut to the bone it is over there. I mean, it's like every day I hear of another great reporter leaving. We have lost a lot of tremendous people, but there are a lot of tremendous people that remain. It's still an outstanding newspaper. It's just, um, it's still an outstanding newspaper, but we have lost a lot of people that are great journalists that we miss very much. And my concern is in stopping uh, the cuts before they become too much, which is not to say that we haven't had a lot of problems or to minimize the losses, you know, David is one of the greats. Uh, we lost a great young talent uh, in Jessica Villa Gomez recently, but there's a lot of great people and there's a lot of reason to stick with us and and uh, the place uh, can be saved and is worth saving. All right, well, we're gonna continue this discussion down the road. We'll see what happens with these proposals, but for now, our thanks to Charles Whitaker, David Jackson, and Gregory Pratt. Thanks, Greg.